And blessed, love to each and every one. We definitely give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. We welcome you to the tiger's nest, of course, the honorable priest Isaac here with you. We are going to go into a wonderful subject area. Today, we're going to be talking about the unique battle formation of warfare as it relates to the Zulu people of Southern Africa. This is gonna be wonderful. In fact, this presentation will be by the young ones. This is just one, what I'm gonna show you now is just one of the many, 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 I would add one more many classes that we do for our international homeschool cosmic classes. I'm sure you all know about our international homeschool program by now. And if you're not a part of it, I will encourage you to be a part of it for sure. Definitely, I consider it to be very inexpensive. Plus, when you balance the, the level of information and knowledge, and not just information and knowledge, but what it would do for your children, I mean, the value of it is way beyond the price, way beyond the price. I'm very serious. Eh? You could definitely contact us, and I would send you a copy of the, the international brochure uh, and our classes. Remember, we offer astronomy and African heritage. I always say, if you really want your child, even if you're doing a good job, if you really want your child to have an appreciation for their African heritage, if that is your dream, believe me, believe me, this program is for you. We offer astronomy and African heritage. Uh, our classes are sent out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So every day you get the class and the classes are in video form and they actually appear in your inbox daily. Now you're going to get more, more than 160 of these classes eh, over a period of a 10 month, uh, a 10 month time frame. That's for sure. And, and over 160, you're just going to see one of the classes now, but you're going to get, your child is going to get over 160 of these every morning, just seeing something fresh and something edifying as far as the international homeschool program. But anyway, as I said, you could contact me, precise at 27 at gmail.com. I will send you a brochure this specific brochure that you are scoping on. And also at the same time, we would send you a video directly dealing with the subject area. All right, so let us just go and uh, take in at least some of this uh, specific class dealing with African history and heritage. Blessed morning to everyone, a blessed uprising. We say rising singing the sun, singing joyously going up into the heavens, a blessed day. Give thanks for the evening that has passed. And as you can see, my wonderful scholars, we already have on board the great kings and queens of Africa. But let me ask you, first of all, how was your evening's rest and how is everything with the family? I hope all is well with your siblings, your friends, cousins, whatever have you. We do pray here that all is well. Yes, today, Honorable Princess, blessed. Blessed love. And today, Honorable Prince, blessed love. Oh, wonderful. We are going to be speaking a little bit about the Zulu kingdom. Now, I know we have kind of touched that before. And of course, in your book, in your book, The Great Kings and Queens of Africa, you have a whole chapter dealing with, well, a whole segment, I should say, dealing with King Shaka of the Zulu Kingdom. Where is King Shaka? I'm seeing Queen Mzinga. I'm seeing Emperor Menelik, Emperor Menelik II. And of course, you know, we have King Mansa Musa there. But oh, that's Queen Tai. That's a very little, little, little bust there. That little statue stuff there, that's very small. Eh? Yeah, it looks big sometimes in the pictures. That's King Jaja. You see King Jaja, where is, ah, but before that, who is this? That's King, as an elephant, or is King Hannibal Baka? All right, King Shaka, hmm. Southern Africa. Oh, okay. All right, 
So give us a little bit of this here, and Robert Princess, give us a little. Uh, this is coming out of our book, The Great Kings and Queens of Africa. Okay. Shaka Zulu was one of the greatest monarchs of the Zulu kingdom. He was born in the month of Untulikazi, July, in 1787, and ruled from 1816 to 1828. Shaka changed the nature of warfare in Southern Africa. Shaka King Shaka changed the nature of warfare in Southern Africa. Meaning that, remember, they were at war with the enemies. Eh? The British came in fighting against them. But King Shaka changed the nature of warfare. I wonder if the young scholars understand what we mean by changing the nature of warfare. This means they were at war. But King Shaka, he devised specific ways and means of making the, the battle, at least for his side, much easier and much better. That is him there, the great King Shaka, the king of the Zulu people. One of the things I know that he did is that he took the long spear and he snapped it in half. And he said, because of such, it would be easier for um, the battle. Uh, yes, close combat. Now, there's a specific formation that the Honorable Prince is going to explain to us of the, the formation and the strategic um, tactics that King Shaka used against the British and the enemies. And this formation, some call it the Zulu Buffalo Horn Battle Strategy. Let me just before the Prince comes read this, you can see them here, chess, um, all the more experienced warriors begin uh, primary attack, enemy strengthens front line, uh, the horns, younger warriors attack weakened flanks. Honorable Prince, explain a bit to us about this buffalo horn battle strategy. Now, if you don't get all of what we, we just said there, basically, it's just that when you're in the chest, which is one part of this buffalo horn strategy, you would charge. If you're in the horns, you would try and get around them so that if they try and run away, you're right behind them. And if you're in the loins, those are basically reserves. So that if the chest or the horns gets weakened a lot, the loins can just come out of nowhere and attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the same thing happening here? Yes. These two are the horns. This is the chest and this is the loins. Okay. And it does look... Oh, yes, and it does look like um, Buffalo Horns for real. Yes. And this is another rendition. What is, is that word there? This is Mpondo Zenkomo. Uh, I must say, I, I, I'm not sure if we are aware of the exact definition of that. Uh, but it must have something to do with the horns. You see it from another aspect here. You can see the horn formation. So it's King Shaka that device this yes. for me. Mm. And generations to come would also use this strategy. Mm, I see, in warfare and in battle. You also see it here from another point of view. Interesting, and you see the enemy, keep in mind the enemy is in the middle. So really, basically what happens is just that you come down on your enemy and surround your enemy you know, with surprise attacks, so you really engulf your enemy. So the scrimshares are, I guess, supposed to be the people with the daggers. Mm -hmm. When Shaka split the spears in half, mm -hmm. because the long throwing spear was not really of long range, depending on if you're powerful enough. Mm -hmm. So he made a short dabbing spear that when that when enemies were coming towards a soldier, they could counterattack and then stab 
stop the enemy. Okay, wow. That's a lot, Princess. The prince seems to know a lot about the Zulu tradition. All right. Well, at the same time here, let us give you a good idea of where, where they really are. As was said earlier, the Zulu empire is here in Southern Africa. I think when you said West Africa, that had to be a, just a, a slip of the mind because yeah. all the knowledge you just shared a while ago, to be honest, you know, you just catch me off guard sometime with the information. Yes, yes, yes. The boys are also a funny topic in the Zulu. You see, these people weren't exactly, the boys weren't British, they weren't French, they weren't Portuguese. They just called themselves their own colony. I see. Yes, they actually went to war with the British to some degree, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And so, so, so here, this is the Zulu Empire here in this um, corner here of South Africa. Uh, would, it, would it have expanded at any time? Yes. Okay. All right. Give like that. when Shaka was training at war, his general was killed by a man named Z Zwide, and he vowed vengeance over that. Mm. So he took away Zwide's power, the Idwangu, and made it his own territory. Yes, yes. And it's good that everyone should know that King Shaka, you know, although we say Shaka Zulu, some people are not too pleased with that. It's, not, it's really King Shaka, the king of the Zulus. Um, also, something to say about his name is that Shaka means intestinal beating because his birth was unexpected. And we in the West call it Shaka Zulu. And Zulu in the Zulu means heaven. So we're basically calling him intestinal beetle heaven. So like Kepra to me. Mm -hmm. So Shaka, um, yeah, the king of the Zulu is is um, studied very much by the military of the world. The same way they study Menelik II and the same way they study King Hannibal. These three generals are studied by the US Army, the Canadian Army, the French Army, and all these armies up to today they are still studied because they are um, war tacticians and strategists, King Shaka being one of them. Honorable Princess, anything you'd like to add before we tell our scholars blessed for at least this class? Yes, actually King Shaka is one of the greatest kings. As a matter of fact, Shaka, Shaka's mother was actually named Nandi. Mm. Yes. And his father was actually King Shenzengakoma. So his father was king before him. Yes. He was illegitimate, if we recall from the beginning. He was illegitimate and was raised by his mother. <laughs> Next. All right. Okay. And give thanks. That is it, my love. Yes. Oh, we give thanks to all the young ones and all the scholars. And of course, give thanks to this enriching um, subject area. The more we know about African heritage, the better off it is for us. And just to enrich our mind, just to understand, just, you know, it's not, there's nothing about our heritage and our history that is being forced on anyone as you could see it's vast i must say that is um that was one of if you notice that is class 46 within the k group of the african heritage and history and i must say that was a wonderful presentation that the young ones gave i think anyone that would have taken this in would have had a good understanding of how um king shaka the king of the zulu would have really carried out his war his warfare on his enemies. So I'm very thankful. And, I, and, and as I said again, this is the sort of information that we give right here on the International Homeschooling Program. I could definitely encourage, that's just one, eh? that's just one, that's uh, 46 of the African heritage. And as I said before, you have African heritage plus astronomy as the 
these are the two subject areas that we cover uh, for the moment. So for sure, you'll get more than 160 classes in all, that's like 80 each of, of, of each one. Now the payments for this, eh, the payments for this is only 50 United States dollar per month. And of course, if you take the year package, it will be 300 United States dollars, which will save you $200. And, and uh, that, that, that specific package is really for a limited time, but it's still on for sure. So you could take advantage of that. And as I said, that is just one of the many, many classes. Astronomy alone is in its own ranks <laughs> to get into the astron astronomical part of it. But I will stress again, you know, as it relates to the psychology of your, your child, trust me, if you really would love your child to have an appreciation for their African heritage, their Afrocentricity, I am positive that these classes would assist in some way to, to encourage and advance the love that they have for the motherland, whether they're in Africa or whether they're in the diaspora. <laughs> diaspora. Definitely. So, of course, you know, contact us, precise at 27 at gmail.com, and I will send you, you know, the, 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 uh, this, this uh, brochure here. And also, I could send you a video giving you some more detail on exactly how you could get your family. I like to say your family, man, to be a part of the international homeschool program. I am looking forward to hearing from you because I mean if we are really serious about our children I know we talk a lot and and sometimes we are upset when people don't even think like us for whatever reason I don't know why you know but if we're really serious eh? if we're really serious I know people that that they drink green juice in the morning and they eat their fruits in the morning and they give their children the regular egg and bacon and you ask them why they do that they say oh they don't want to eat what I eat. That's what they like. Not got nothing can go. So since when I'm sure that's not what your mother told you. I know that's not what your mother told you. You had to eat what she gave you. You see what I'm saying? So so a lot of us we take in a lot of knowledge. We take in a lot of information. We read this book and we read that book and we're the brightest and we can tell you this and tell you that and this kingdom and that kingdom and read this off the walls. Yeah, but we, we put our children in front of the television to watch Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck. You understand? That's the same thing with the healthy eating and the egg and bacon. You understand? That's your child. So the same way that you are growing in this great knowledge, your child, your children should be growing in the knowledge too. They don't have to take it in the exact same way that you take it in. But what we have done, me I'm talking about, we have taken that same great knowledge and formulated it in a way. Look, you see, it's my child that taught that lesson. Eh? Children would listen to a child. Plus we have so many other classes where we show videos and music. And I'm telling you, so what we have done, we have taken the same knowledge that you have or you're trying to attain and, and, and formulated it in such a way that the child could eat it or take it in. It's just like processed children's food. I'm not encouraging you to go buy no children's food or nothing in no bottle at all. I've never encouraged you to do that. But I'm just showing, it, showing you this as an example. What they do, they take the grown-up food and process it in a way that they could put it in a little jar and give it to a baby that doesn't have any teeth. So it's the same thing here. We take the grown up food as such and process it in such a way that the child could, could take it in, you know? So give thanks. And when you get the brochure, there's a link on the brochure that will take you to another presentation that we did, um, giving you also a better idea of all the different subject areas that we cover in both astronomy and African history as it relates to the international homeschooling program. So definitely give thanks, looking forward to hearing from you. Remember, we're talking about our children, man, our children, our children. And I mean, to invest in your children is investing in your whole self. You're investing in your lineage and your dynasty and your generations to come, you understand. And I think the investment is very, very minimal really 
for the value that I know you will get. I'm only stressing this because of love. Eh? Take it from me because of love. And I know what we have to offer. So do give thanks for the life given, the keep of life, and Brian's last and first. Looking forward to hearing from you. Holy Emmanuel, I. Slash ya. Ja. Rastafari. Bless love.